Last December 2016, I traveled to Japan. There, I was able to witness breathtaking architectural feats, feast on mouth-watering Japanese delicacies, and engage in Japanese culture firsthand. More importantly, I was able to walk the promenades of Asakusa while munching on fried mochi and sipping warm sake. But let's be honest, you clicked on this video to find out what are the stationary shops in Tokyo. This is a short photo story of the one-day itinerary where I plan to visit a variety of major stationary shops in Tokyo, all in less than 12 hours. Is it possible? Let's find out. Before we go through the entire outline of stationary stops, it would be best to note that upon arrival at Narita Airport, you must visit the Traveler's Factory store on the 4th floor of Terminal 1. It was just as pleasantly vintage as I imagined it to be, and they have a stamping corner where you can stamp as much as you want. Don't forget to pick up Narita exclusive items from the shop because you can't find that anywhere else. Let's begin. So my first day was in Ginza, and that's where you will find G Etoya. G Etoya is a massive stationery store that boasts of eight levels of stationery goods. Each level is allocated for a specific set of stationery items. An entire level dedicated to pens, another one solely for paper, and the list goes on. It was a pleasant experience to look around the shop, and the variety was great. One of my must-dos in Atoya was to have a personalized hanko made for myself. But when I asked the lady which level I could have it done, she told me to go to K Atoya. So K Atoya can be found at the street behind the G Atoya. It only had five levels. It wasn't as luxurious as G Atoya, but in my honest opinion, K Atoya was much more relatable and more compact. Each level has a different purpose as well. So browsing the different levels while waiting for my hanko was fun. After which, we caught a train to Shibuya. Of course, apart from getting to say hi to Hachiko and walking the busy Shibuya crossing, the real intention was to visit two more stationary stops. The Loft was more than what I expected. I was just extremely pleased with the selection of stationery and the ambiance. I spent about two hours at the loft before I went to Tokyo Hands. This is hands down my favorite stationery shop in Japan. Tokyo Hands is located just a couple of blocks from the loft. Tokyo was not as fancy as the loft though, but still had a good selection of stationary items as well. I guess I was shopped out when I arrived in Tokyo Hands because I didn't purchase anything from that store. One ramen bowl after, I made my way to Nakameguro to pay homage to the mother ship. And that's the Traveler's Factory. It's the main store and it did not disappoint. It was exactly as I imagined it to be. The selection was on point and they have everything a Travels Factory fan could ever want. Of course, a stamp station was also available on site. Top it all off, you can order coffee or tea from the counter and take it upstairs where you can find tables and lounges where you can journal and relax, take flat lays and photos. The trip to Nakameguro was a delightful experience and it was so difficult to say goodbye to this lovely shop, especially when the Christmas lights were lit. The verdict? Five stationary shops in one day? Yes, it is feasible. That evening, we even managed to go to the Tokyo Tower. I think what made the trip entirely possible was the efficiency and speed of the transport system. The downside of doing all the stationary stops in one day was the fact that I had to make wise purchases in a short amount of time. To be honest with you, my stationary halls weren't as grand as I expected them to be, as I underestimated the food cost. The meals were pretty expensive, so I reallocated budget for stationery towards food. But that really doesn't matter because I am most definitely coming back to this beautiful country of the rising sun for more stationery shopping. 